The following KQED production was produced in high definition. Twelve hundred years ago, the largest and most powerful of the ancient Maya cities of its time rose out of the jungle in what is today Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. With its temples, great ball cord, and sacred well, the city of Chichen Itza attracted pilgrims from around the Maya world for spectacular religious celebrations that often centered on the Maya's keen observation of the cosmos. That understanding continues to fascinate us to this day. Centuries after the peak of the Maya civilization, technology developed in the Bay Area is helping to shed light on the astronomical discoveries of the ancient Maya. And it's giving the Bay Area's immigrant Maya community new tools to connect to its history. Being from there and knowing that your ancestors uh, built that pyramid, it just brings some feeling of connection with those places. You know, it just makes your imagination fly. Bay Area researchers are using state-of-the-art laser scanners to recreate Chichen Itza's buildings and the ways in which the Maya use them to observe the stars and planets. These 3D digital images are the basis for a new half-hour film about Maya astronomy called Tales of Maya Skies. For the first time, Oakland Chabot Space and Science Center is borrowing a technology that is widely used in Hollywood films to create a show for its planetarium. The theater's rounded shape offers a unique experience. We're testing whether in fact people learn, which we believe they do, more effectively in this kind of an immersive environment. You're nearly surrounded by 360 degrees of sound, color, intensity. By exposing some of the history, the myths, the culture of the Maya, interwoven with the science and the astronomy, I think it's really compelling. Starting around the year 250, the Maya built monumental cities in southern Mexico, Guatemala, Belize, Honduras, and El Salvador. But by the time the Spaniards arrived to the Americas in 1492, overpopulation, political unrest, and war had led the residents of most of these cities to disperse. The Spaniards wreaked further havoc through violence and disease. The Maya survived these hardships, and today, millions still live in the region. But civil war and the crisis of small-scale farming have pushed tens of thousands to immigrate to the United States. Nearly 5,000 Guatemalan Maya and 25,000 Maya from Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula have settled in the Bay Area. Maya activist Alberto Perez, who was born in the Yucatan, hopes that through its vivid recreation of Chichen Itza, the new film will help his community reconnect with its history. You know, it brings the best of the modern technology, computer animation, and puts it at the service of reconstructing our past. One, two, in order to produce Tales of Maya Skies, the Chabot Center worked with two Bay Area nonprofits to capture Chichen Itza's architecture and artistic details with laser scanners rather than traditional film technology. Scanning gives the film's producers more flexibility. An advantage of scanning is that when you have the three-dimensional scene, you can then virtually relight it and you can actually have a virtual camera. And that camera you can place anywhere you want and you can have sweeping views. You can do aerials that you, you couldn't possibly afford. Kevin Kane is the director of Insight, the Emeryville nonprofit that supervised the scanning in Chichen Itza. His company carried out the close range scanning of the glyphs, sculptures, and artwork on the buildings with super fast lasers that pick up the location of each point on an object's surface, creating a cloud of points. It's like a transit that a surveyor might use, but instead of picking up one point at a time, you pick up probably hundreds of thousands of points within a minute, and actually, as you start aggregating those into a cloud of measurements, you have billions of points. 
The 3D images of each of Chichen Itza's monuments were created by an Arinda nonprofit called SciArc, using a long-range scanner created by its founder, Ben Kasira. And, and how many seconds is it going to take? Uh, 39 seconds. He originally designed the scanner for his engineering work, but a childhood spent surrounded by the archaeological treasures of northern Iraq and the recent destruction of monuments in nearby countries eventually led him down a different path. This shocking footage from Afghanistan, recorded exclusively by the Al Jazeera network, greeted Kasira when he turned his TV on in March of 2001. The Buddhas in Bamiyan, the magnificent statues, were blown up by the Taliban. It had to affect you, it, it tore your heart. You know, how could this unique thing all of a sudden disappear? Uh, the human race is, it's part of our memory, and part of our memory just vanished, gone. So Kasira started SciArc, a nonprofit working to create a digital trove of irreplaceable sites worldwide. Kasira approached officials at the Chabot Center about projecting clouds of points in their planetarium, and soon had them interested in adopting the technology for a film. Laser technology allowed the creators of Tales of Maya Skies to describe the Maya's astronomical accomplishments through breathtaking animations. The Maya carefully charted the sun, for example, and their tropical latitude gave them a unique vantage point. One of the principal astronomical phenomena that has shaped the way in which the Maya uh, believe in the order of the cosmos is what is called the zenith passage of the sun or when the sun comes directly overhead at noon. That moment we here north of the tropics, we do not experience. At the latitude of the Maya, this happened twice around the summer solstice, around May and July. And this unique event was recorded by the Maya by aligning certain important buildings in Chichen Itza. One of them is a sculpture that sits on top of what is called the Temple of the Warriors. And at sunset on that same day, the ruler could predict that the sun would set in such a way that from the Temple of the Warriors, you would see it creep down precisely behind this great sculpture. Over more than 100 years, the Maya observed the zenith sun reappear and were able to calculate how long it takes for the Earth to orbit the sun. The result was a solar calendar just as accurate as the one we follow today. The edges are highlighted. Two months before the November 2009 opening of the film, the production team is hard at work in Oakland. As the serpent hits the water, we're going to add a splashing. Today, they're critiquing one of the film's centerpiece animations, which illustrates another solar event. The phenomenon that Chichen Itza is most famous for is what is called the descent of the Kukul Khan, or the feather serpent, which is a solar phenomenon that happens only during the equinox. So as the sun rises in the east, it'll draw an arc in the sky and it will set in the west. Seven isosceles triangles were formed mimicking the back of a snake, and here's the head of the snake pointing north. And at that time, you have like 60,000 people will come from all over the world to view this phenomenon. It's really amazing. The Maya believe that their god Kukul Khan, the feathered serpent, slithers off the pyramid and into the sacred well to bring on the rains. Because their written record was destroyed or lost to the elements, Many questions remain about whether the Maya who built Chichen Itza intentionally align their buildings to record the movements of the sun and other celestial bodies. As more Maya symbols continue to be deciphered, these mysteries might be unveiled. And perhaps the film Tales of Maya Skies will contribute to that effort. Maybe that will be the little thing that will spark the interest in becoming one day researchers, as archaeologists, as anthropologists, or astronomers. They will continue to discover things about our ancestors and our past.